As a little girl, my favorite thing to go on when I went to the park was a seesaw. I believe a seesaw can accurately describe my life because I've had my ups and downs, but also because stability, trust, and support are the things I learned of the most in life. I remember the thrill I got every time when I went on him. It was like I was reaching the sky. Back then, as a kid, trust came very easily because I didn't really even know what it was. Today, trusting others is something I take very personally. I've lost friends like I'm sure most teenagers have. Honestly, the idea of trusting someone is still very difficult. In the handful of those I do trust, it's crazy to think how trust is spilled through time and how easily it can be broken. If I were to go back in time and have the knowledge I have today, I'd think about the other person I'd gone to seesaw with. Because really, I'd ask myself, would they be there when I fall down and help me pick myself back up, or would they not care and leave me? Life is full of many unanswered questions, and no matter what, I've discovered that just how the seesaw needs more than one person to function and have fun with, I also need a little person there. In this case, the people I can't live without are my family. So many beautiful memories come to mind when I think of them. God bless me with a big and crazy family. I have my mom and dad who go out of their way to give us what we want and need. My mom is the world's best mom. We might fight and argue from time to time, but at the end of the day, I know she'll always be there to love and support me. My dad isn't always around, but I've learned to deal with him, and although it sucks not seeing him much, I know he'll never be too far away. I have three brothers, Alex, Anthony, and Max. They, along with three sisters, Ruby, Dan, Ari, and Angelica, all annoy me very much, but I love having them around. There's never a quiet moment at home, and most people would find that terrible, but me, I've gotten so used to it that when it is quiet, I get scared. I admire my parents so much for having such a big family, and I know it's not easy, but they still have to manage it. I will forever be grateful for everything they do, and I will always put them first no matter what. As a child, we're asked what our dreams and goals are for the future. On occasions, these goals are sometimes far stretched or even fairy tale like. I remember when saying I wanted to be a princess and live in a castle, but then again, what little five year old girl didn't dream of things like that? Today, I dream of forming a family and having a house and being happy. I dream of getting married and having kids. To be honest, I'm not sure what it is I want to do when I grow older. I want to work and have a job that I like and I can help others because I enjoy volunteering and helping in any way I can. I usually volunteer at my little brother's preschool and I like it. It makes me feel good about myself. My biggest dream of all is to travel the world. I want to experience what's out there and learn from my own adventures. I dream of visiting places like Paris, London, Egypt, Spain, Africa, and many others. I want to learn about the different cultures and the way others around the world live their life. Happiest place on earth for me is home. Ever heard that saying, there's no place like home? Well, for me, this is very true. At home, I feel the most safe and where I can be myself with absolutely no one there to judge me. It's where I'm surrounded by the people I love the most and where I've made the most memories with. I lived in this house for about 11 years now, and I'm happy for being able to call it home. I remember one year, all our family was supposed to go on a holiday vacation, but we ended up staying and not going. We spent Christmas at home with just us and a couple of friends. That Christmas was probably the best Christmas I've ever had. All the kids ended up getting more presents due to the cancellation of the trip, and we all had a great time together. This place will always hold lots of special memories for me and my family. One of the most important people in my life is my uncle. He's someone I love very deeply and who's always been there, and I mean always. I can't remember any special event for me that he wasn't a witness. He's never missed my birthday and he's usually always the first to congratulate me. He goes out of his way to spend time with me and my siblings, even if it means not sleeping. He took on the night shift at work so he can spend more time with us. He's always there supporting me and my brother. Whether it's at a track meet or a soccer game, you'll see him there cheering us on. To me, he's more than my uncle. He's like a second dad. My dad still holds a very special place in my heart, but when I look at how my uncle goes out of his way to spend time with us, I can't help but wish my dad was a little more like that too. I owe him so much in life, including my love for running. It was him who supported me and told me not to give up. I love him very much and hope to someday in some way return everything he's done for me. As humans, we're all bound to make mistakes at some point in our lives because nobody is perfect. Something I truly regret a lot was not being able to spend enough time with someone I loved very much. My grandpa passed away when I was only 13 years old. When I was little, my grandpa told me he had diabetes, and so he and my grandma decided to move back to Mexico where the cost for his treatment wouldn't be so expensive. As the years went on, he didn't get any better, and soon he began to lose eyesight. Suddenly, visiting us became very difficult for both him and us, considering how big our family was growing. I regret not being able to spend more time with him and getting to know him better. Attending his funeral was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Because of this, I can only wish to spend more time with the people I love the most. 
I believe that adults can be both dream killers but also savers. Soccer was never a sport I was interested in doing, but you see, my dad loved it, so he encouraged me to practice and play with my older brother. As I grew, I began to really hate the sport, so I went to my mom, and she hates soccer a lot. So when I told her, she said she would get me out of soccer if I took martial arts classes with my brother instead, and so I agreed. I was 7 when I first joined and 13 when I stopped. At first, I hated going because it was a sport mostly made for guys, so girls would never stick around past their yellow or orange belt. I soon grew to love it. Now I thank her for dragging me to class in the beginning because doing this sport for so many years really helped shape how I turned out to be. I'm so much more confident in myself and in what I can do. So yeah, my dad tried pushing me into something I didn't want, but my mom saved me and saw how beneficial martial arts would be for me and I'm glad. Last summer, I decided I wanted to become a part of something at school, so I joined cross country. I wasn't used to other running and in the beginning my body was always tired or sore. I remember my parents asking how I liked it after the first week and I told them it was alright but that I was tired a lot after practice and that it would take time to get used to it. They wanted to make sure I maintained my good grades and that the sport wouldn't distract me from my academics and in the beginning they didn't think I would be able to handle it. This really discouraged me. I wanted to quit very badly. I'm thankful my uncle was there to remind me how goals aren't always going to be easy to reach. I was going to have to put in a lot of hard work to do what I wanted to do. And so I did. I didn't give up and I kept running. I'm glad I did because I made friends with amazing people and we always support one another. Running is a sport almost anyone can do. You just have, it, have to have it in you to continue and not give up. For me, distance running is more of a mental sport than a physical one, and I will continue to do it for as long as I can. I see myself as a tigger because I always try to look at life in a positive way. I enjoy being happy and making others smile. I'm not saying I can't be in the year at times because I can, but it's usually very obvious when I'm sad or angry. I know when it's time to be serious and when it's time to have fun, and I've learned to balance out these things in life. I believe that in the end, everyone can have a bit of an ear, no matter how much of a tigger they are. Sometimes tiggers just don't show it as much because they rather not let any little thing ruin their whole day. Life isn't meant to be easy, and no matter how hard things get, they can be accomplished, and in the end, it will all pay off. My dad was the first to show me what the feeling you get after accomplishing something you worked so hard for feels like. He taught me how to ride my bike, how to stay standing after jumping off a swing set, and how to swim. I may not spend the same amount of time I do now that I did back then with him, but I still remember things like this. It was him who asked me what I felt like every time after I accomplished these goals that I tried so hard to reach as a little girl. Every time he asked, I answered with great and how everything had finally paid off. He told me to remember this feeling. To this day, nothing feels better than accomplishing a goal you've worked so hard for. For me, it might be something as little as acing a test or getting a PR at a race. At the end of each accomplishment, I know that everything I worked hard for will always pay off, so never give up. There are days when I wake up and I don't know what I'm doing.